Hey fellas, with Doom Eternal now upon us, I present my look at the DTV film Doom Annihilation. The 2005 film wasn't very good, it did have at least three things I liked about it. The FPS sequence was really cool, Dwayne The Rock Johnson further making his transition from wrestler to actor, and I pre-framed Carl Urban acting opposite him. In other words, Black Adam and Dread killing demons. This movie, however, was not well received at all. Originally intended for theaters, it was instead dumped direct to video or was, was land based by Christian fans alike. Even id Software themselves disowned the movie on their Twitter account, saying it was made without their creative input. So let's open this one up. After her, a brief prologue showing the lead losing mother to child, so there's a mention again to way later, it opens up some very fake looking shots of a base on Mars. It's a very cheap looking sets and CG that's somehow phonier than the video game series it's based on. I'm not familiar with writer director Tony Giglio, but based on how this zombie looks like he's casting bad Halloween makeup, this would be both irritating and hilarious how bad it is. Early is Lieutenant Dark, sadly. There's no relation to Joanna Dark from Perfect Dark. Her transport, the Nola, it's one main alien but stolen, including its pilot, who is a way less amusing version of Dana Bride's character Alien Covenant. Ironic. You know how the game stars an alien time where Fox said no, so it made something else. Naturally, the alien mods would be popular for the game, but I get ahead of myself. Also, the ship's OS is named Daisy. Real subtle. Some of the other Marines, including Lee, are token Asian female and discount Lieutenant Hoshi, and Tarek, who's playing a VR shooter, are introduced, but not really established other than being one of the main elements stolen from aliens, minus no reason to care about them. I just don't know why it's so dismissive about learning languages in your sleep, even as a joke it doesn't make sense logistically. <sighs> their chairs also are just lawn chairs with logos painted on them, and their food dispensers seems to be a flimsier version of the one from the Matrix. As the ship continues, moves on its way, we introduced to Dr. Petruga, who's so obviously villain he is short of a top hat, black cape, and slightly whiplash mustache. Sure enough, an accident occurs just as the Marines arrive on base. Some of the other ones are called Akua and Harry Bennett, who's like a discount at Helms or Silent Pig, minus the humor. 20 minutes, and I still don't care about these characters. There's some very really clunky references to the games as well. Production values, even by DTV standards, are honestly abysmal. When the BBC can make a more convincing space station out of a soundstage on most given episodes of Doctor Who, you're doing something wrong. Though, that's not the worst of the dodgy effects. X, I mean, I have some choice words for that. There's also characters named Morgan Hill Freeman. Still not invested, though this hallway appears to be all known from the Tanty 4 from Star Wars. Let's see how many films this one still filmed before the end. Also, they apparently killed off Blaskowitz from Wolfenstein, my favorite id Software character in the series, respectively. Smooth. Not as bad as killing off Ethan Gene House of the Dead, but a close second. Anyway, they find a blue key on one of the corpses. There's one way of integrating that part from the game just over a half hour in. I once again laugh that seems meant to be serious. Have, haven't even seen that much of the demons yet, and you're about to find out why. More shots of how fake space looks in this movie. The pilot takes another hit from his flask. Navigation changes to provide another bit from the games. Look, while confusing level design plus may provide challenge in the game, it's just irritating in the movie. Also, I just love how the garden in this movie is just one wall with fake plants hanging from it. I'm no expert, but you don't have the money to realize that set. Maybe don't include it in the movie. Especially since the space station looks more like a soundstage every time you straight through it. We're 36 minutes in, we get our first zombie. Still looking like an extra in a bad Halloween makeup. The action's dimly lit, clumsily shot and sharply edited all at once. I didn't even know Tarek died until my second viewing to write this script, and that was due to the closed captions on my Netflix profile. Another casualty is Dr. John Carmack, named for one of the game's creators. Given how this movie turned out, uh, it's the best after metaphor is when the Double Dragon movie smashed an arcade cabinet in the game. Lee kills another zombie, and sometimes a gunshot effect appears after the weapon firing sound, if at all. What, were the effects rendered on Google Stadia? 
the gunfight that follows another bit of incoherent string of shaky cam, rough cuts and badly composite explosions. I mean, when a version of the scale that's almost as old as my brother looks better than this, you're doing something wrong. Just look at the scene where Dark chainsaws a zombie. The blood on her visor looks a lot like grape jam. I did however get a good chuckle out of the soldiers telling zombies to fuck off while they're on the ladder. <laughs> Some of the other soldiers include Rance and Carly, none of which are distinct personality-wise. Personally, I prefer this movie was another co-op session between Doomguy and Isabel, but that's just me. Dr. Petruger is still behaving like discomfort of Paul Rogers character in Aliens, with the same plan, no less. And the pilot gets attacked by a demon jump scare. Just wait, I have more in a moment. For now, their attempts to justify the gates from the game is just absurd. Somehow, the idea that the Sumerians knew about aliens sounds like the infamous History Channel meme. The Doctor also has the red key and we're just over halfway through with the slog. Dr. Petruga then tries to keep the base open, attempting an impression of John Herb and like off like Dr. Forrester. There's also an off remark about Dark's heirloom, but that's only the second time it's been mentioned in 56 minutes. The simple answer has so little impact on the story they could have cut and it wouldn't fit the movie at all. Also, Daisy has gone rogue and a bit stolen from Alien with a dash of Coke Thumb Brand 2001 A Space Odyssey. Alternately, maybe she's just jealous of Peach and Rosalina getting a smash for her. The pilot is dead. Get another piece of the demons. Oh boy, they look bad. And the game's typically pretty imposing and spooky, but here, just lumbering dumb muscle. Oh, that looks like a bad cosplay of Venom. Also... It's fireball attacks like bad quality gifts you'll find online. For those who on about Charles on Rapid Dash Mutual Evolution, allow me to introduce you to Doom Annihilation. Mm. One hour down, 36 minutes to go as the soldiers came and take down one demon and Rance is killed. Even Dark and Bat know what I do. Aim for the mouth! On top of that, they keep going from dolled up costumes and CG that's worse than the game's movie supposedly based on. Also, the one that attacks Dark is apparently a Dementor, as shown trying to sap her memories and life force. I honestly wasn't expecting Harry Potter being a rip-off list for this movie, but might as well put it on there. Another soldier named Chaplin is killed, we get more fake costumes, bad CGI blood, that's worse than the games. I think almost a dozen cuts to kill just one of them. It makes me wonder about Matthew Vaughn would have done this movie. Thankfully, there's only just over a half hour left. To have a true proposed reactivating the gates with fewer options to go through with a plan to gather where they need to go back to Earth. Well, they stole most of the other plot that's from Alien. Why not steal that final act too? Also, out of nowhere, to have a true accuses Dark and her unit of treason, which I guess wasn't the point to establish as her maternal trauma. You know, when Alien uses this plot thread, they set it up. You can't just throw it randomly and last half for people to understand what's going on. That also goes for this gunfight with the demons in the darkened corridor. I guess they blew the visual effects much to make it less shape being in the lights. Dark and Ben are the only ones left, and someone named Sin gives Dark the yellow key, which Dr. Petruga somehow didn't notice as she killed her. They also bring in my favorite thing from the games, BF9000 or Big Fucking Gun. Still, they can't reduce it without bringing up a plot point that wasn't set up, corny monotone lines, and seeing from T2 when she breaks a gun out of its case. Hmm. Dark and Ben also used to date, but I don't care. There's only 16 minutes left, so let's finish this up. A demon kills Bennett, and Dark must now blast her way out of Phobos to get back to Earth. Bennett is zombified. Dr. Petruga goes on some tangent, like it looks like it came from a movie made 20 years before this one even came out. He even gets Dark's gun, but she's able to flip it back and shoot him. Of all the movies this one uh, stole from, I wasn't expecting to see on there the ground Stevens of Gal to be one of them. There's one last gunfight when the CGI demons look unfinished, and the big one looks like a destroyed from the first Thor. Let's get one last laugh as a dark smother. Did they even want to make a Doom movie at all? This plot that had no major impact on the film at all. We close on Joan Dark returning to Earth, where demons coming through behind her. Ha! They thought they were going to make sequels. That's rich. Say hi to Princess Daisy for me, fellas. <laughs> While I'm not doing the 2005 movie, this one is not only one of the worst video game movies I've ever, I've ever viewed, but one of the worst movies 
these I've ever covered on this channel. It's also one of the funniest, not for the reasons they intended. A paper thin plot, generic characters, production master would shame your average hit sci fi originals, TV movie, all make fun experience that's worse than I couldn't see at Bethesda. The joke attempts fall flat, that the attempts at being serious are unintentionally hilarious. Funny that both this and Mortal Kombat Annihilation share the same subtitle and the stick to the level of quality. I don't recommend this to anyone for anything except maybe to mock it like I have done. In an age after Detective Pikachu and Son of the Hedgehog, not to mention Rick and Ralph, this isn't worth your time. I mean, my final rating on this movie is half a base star out of four. Even as we're all alone together, I'll bring you more content as I have it ready later. <laughs>